Thank you, Eddie, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a real privilege for me to start to take you on this journey into what we're calling complex uh, services uh, this afternoon. And I, I guess it was uh, this time last year at a conference that I started to share some thinking about complex relational services where the user is a vital participant, not just somebody completing a simple transaction. Um, uh, somebody who is actually actively engaged, uh, often in producing the very outcome that they're seeking. I want to take that a stage further today and think also about Socketum's role in all of that and how we as professionals can play a critical part in the reform uh, and reformation of those services. And in thinking about that, I was, I was kind of struck by an observation by Nicola Graham, one of our, our vice presidents earlier this week. She tweeted, uh, organizations like Socketim build communities to help each other do the public services jigsaw even when the picture has been lost. Even when the picture uh, has been lost. And it got me thinking, you know, what, what is our picture? What is your picture? Do complex relational services actually feature in your picture? And if they don't, have we, have we the means to rediscover them? and to pioneer them in our transformation strategies and plans. And Jeff referred to alligators and swamps. Well, I'm going to take us on a little bit of geography uh, just before I get into this. Um, I always think it's interesting and, and helpful to look at different perspectives from different people in different places, if nothing else, to challenge our assumptions and thinking about what is possible. And today we welcome 27 delegates from seven different countries to our conference, all come to exchange ideas and perspectives. This morning we shared some of those perspectives together. And later in the conference we have Scott Moore, our Socketim Scholarship Award winner from last year, who will be sharing his experiences from Seoul in South Korea. So I want to start in a very different place, with a different picture and a different kind of person. So three years ago, I was uh, happy to join a Canadian expedition on a month-long trek around Manaslu and Annapurna in Nepal. The trek was supported by a company called Peak Promotions, a mountain and trekking company based in Kathmandu and led by Wong Chu Sherpa, you see on the slide here. Wong Chu Sherpa was orphaned at six years old. He progressed to become a mountain guide and started his own trekking company and mountain expedition company, Peak Promotions. His many achievements include summiting Everest twice, and his assignments include supporting the filming of Michael Palin's Himalaya series for the BBC. And when I got talking, it became clear that he had never forgotten. He had never forgotten his place, his village, Chiang Ma, his people, and their needs. And over the course of some 25 years, he invested in that place. He used his business and network of friends and contacts from around the world to fund a secondary school, a health post, electricity through a microgenerator project, and road access to his village. And if you think about it, these were simple, standard solutions shared with his community that gave his villagers better chances and better outcomes. And why do I share this story with you? Place, people, outcomes, simplify, standardize, share. These are the words that I'm asking you to hold on to as I share my thoughts and thinking on reforming complex services. So this is the agenda then. Complex relational services, what are they? Socketim's purpose in all of that, and what might be the role of us as heads of IT, CIOs and CDOs, chief D digital officers, chief information officers. Well, a Nesta report earlier this year set out to define uh, what they thought was meant by the term uh, relational services. So complex relational services, services that are about fostering connections uh, between people particularly in areas like social care, adult care assessments, assisted living, 
domiciliary care, safeguarding children, fostering and adoption services, hospital discharges, care for the homeless, you know, the list goes on. And all of these cut across the silos of public services. In a socket and policy briefing earlier this year, I argued that many of these complex relational services require face-to-face -face contact, but they've been built up over many years through a whole series of process, what I call process accretions, just adding more process. Every time something goes wrong, you add a bit more process, you, you involve another stakeholder, uh, you just complicate the, 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 the whole approach. They rely on paper-based processing and record keeping. They serve the purposes of the siloed producers, not the service user. And in doing so, they lose sight of the very thing they're trying to achieve. Put simply, they've never been designed with a better outcome in mind. And yet these services demand significant chunks of local authority, uh, budgets and resources. And here you'll see on the slide a typical county council uh, uh, budget. 45% of its net, net budget, in this case, goes on social care. And that's pretty typical across social care authorities throughout the country. And my point is that these complex relational services have rarely been designed, never mind transformed, and they've hardly been touched by the digital world that increasingly we, have it, we inhabit. So the impact. Who here heard the presentations by Helen Olson, and Dylan Roberts at our spring conferences last year and this year. Can you put your hands up? So quite a few of you did. Helen gave a passionate expose of her plight as a mother in trying to access fragmented services to support her disabled son. Dylan talked about Bob, about treating him as a whole person, not as an atomized individual with bits of him addressed by a variety of different and unconnected services, public, private, third sector, and community-based. And it's easy to point the finger, but actually, good news. Digital technologies are being used to support these sorts of services. Data is being shared, as in Leeds with the Integrated Digital Care Record Project, across place, the whole city, not confined to a single organization. New tools are helping people to manage their own long-term conditions and connect to a broader network of support, such as peer mentors, health coaches, friends and family, volunteers and group-based activities. And services are being revolutionized by predictive, place-based data analytics and algorithms, which allow councils to intervene in a more timely and effective way. But do you recognize that? I guess the bad news is that these developments are confined to a few leading places uh, around the UK. And we talk a lot about transformation, yet a recent Brunel University report uh, highlighted the systemic failure, the delusion of transformation in public services. If you're interested, we covered this in our recent Insight briefing, Changing the Game, the Systemic Failure of Transformation. The lesson here is that we need to rise above that delusion that transformation can simply be addressed by better websites, apps, and channel shift. Important as these things are, they simply don't cut it for Bob or for Helen's son. Furthermore, I would argue that we need to consign the whole notion of the front back office distinction to the garbage bin. Instead, we need to shift our focus to whole systems approaches. Reforming complex services and harnessing data and digital technologies to do so. Looking across whole places and whole systems that cut across the silos of public services. And this has parallels with the concept of force multipliers in the armed forces. That everybody from the office cleaner to the chief executive contributes value to better outcomes. So back to my key words. It is in places that we're discovering and pioneering what works and what doesn't in collaborati collaboratively designing with people to address outcomes that matter to them, building platforms that rest on the principles and foundations of simplify, standardize, and share. 
And I'm not saying that one size fits all. Eastbourne is not Leeds, is not Flandindrod Wells, is not Ballymena, is not the Highlands of Scotland. What I'm arguing here is that common foundations can be adapted and adopted to fit the political, environmental, social and economic landscapes of individual places. After all, roads, schools, hospitals, telephone and internet are essentially standardised components that can be adapted to fit most lo localities. So it's great to see in Scotland, after Sockenham's work with the local Digital Transformation Board, that 27 local authorities out of 32 are collaborating to build the digital foundations for place-based services transformation through funding a shared digital, chief digital officer, chief technical officer, and digital transformation team. And it was fascinating this morning to hear of a very similar collaborative initiative uh, in Victoria, Australia. In Wales, we're involved in a shared place-based approach to assessing digital readiness across places in Wales. And in England, Sockenham is making a strong case to the NHS National Improvement Board for a place-based whole system approach to health and social care integration, building on practical evidence and simple standard business capabilities and components that can be shared. And all of these initiatives take us on a journey into the landscape of complex relational services. So what might be Sockingham's purpose in all of this? Well, your board has been grappling with this question, and we suggest it is something like this. Leadership and innovation in the transformation of local public services in the digital world. In other words, this is the territory that Sockingham seeks to occupy with its members and networks. Building le leadership capabilities, as Jeff suggested, facilitating innovative approaches to transforming local place-based public services, and all in a world that is increasingly digitally connected. So I just want to run quickly through three different areas, influence, support and enabling networks, and developing relevant products and services uh, to illustrate this, this point. So in terms of influence, we have four priority policy areas that we're working on at the moment. Uh, Jeff's mentioned some of them, but redesign and transformation of services, public services, health and social care integration, a diverse workforce, and cyber security. And in each of these areas, we're making our voice heard, independently in the press and social media, uh, thanks to people like Helen uh, in UKAuthority.com, Public Service Digital, uh, and other uh, channels. On the many platforms on which Jeff and our President's team and I, I speak on behalf of Socketim, in a wide range of representative bodies and steering groups in which we participate, through the local CIO Council, through collaborations, working with strategic partners, so with the LGA and SOLAS earlier this year, uh, we made the case for digital leadership in a policy briefing. Supporting the local digital coalition, five place-based projects, including working with GDS and Verify, and Linda O'Halloran will be talking about that later in the conference program. But each of the five projects uh, that the coalition is supporting uh, aim to offer simple standard solutions that can be openly shared. And I'm delighted to say that our Better Connected uh, service is now going to be working this year with Information Age uh, to, uh, on two planned social care services in 2016-17. CC2I, they're developing an open platform for sharing and they'll be talking about that in the Sockingham Innovation Session uh, tomorrow. And we're engaged and watching with interest Eddie's work uh, or Nesta's work with the Data Voris pr project, I should say Eddie's work uh, with the GLA uh, on an office, a pilot of an office of data analytics in London. And with SOLAS, D the LGA, DCLG and others, we're making headway, as Jeff said, in the case for local public services to be embraced in the National Cyber Security Centre and strategy that is about to be released. And again, all of these initiatives, I would argue, help to lay the foundations for reforming complex relational services. And moving on to networks, we have a long-standing commitment uh, to working with our members, uh, providing events such as this one, uh, the regional events and so on, but new networks too, 
So just one example, we've already heard about our Women in IT network, established by, by Nadira, uh, and linked to that, the Empowering Women in a Digital World uh, program. And it's now run twice, and I have to say, from my first-hand experience, uh, we had two people from our Sockingham office who've been on that program, and it's just simply amazing. Uh, the, the difference it's made uh, to those people. And uh, some of you will have been at the uh, symposium this morning and heard the very moving accounts uh, from those participants in that program. And as a BBC News article argued earlier this week, women bring a totally different mindset to design. So if we are to redesign and reform complex services, it's vitally important to me, and I think all of us, that women play a leading role. And we've been transforming our products and services. Place-based, people-focused, better outcomes, simplify, standardize, and share, always in the back of our minds. Making our services more adaptable, easier to access and use, more online, more collaborative. Our digital maturity assessment, developed by our head of research, Andy Hopkirk, uh, has been used in England, uh, working with the LGA and ADAS to survey and provide input to the place-based local digital roadmaps and sustainability plans, and indeed will influence the financial allocations that are soon to be announced. Our Insight Research Programme, overseen by Andy and myself, uh, with help from our member-led uh, research steering group, includes a range of products and services, our monthly topical briefings, Better Connected, I've mentioned, with Vicky Sargent leading that particular program. Uh, that's moved online. We're looking much more, not just at websites, but actually digital end-to-end -end enabled services. And our research projects for 2016, our online security guide, which I'm pleased to be announcing today, is being launched as an ongoing updated guide uh, for our socket and members in general. Um, so please have a look at that. Platforms for the future, uh, place as a platform, building on Mark Thompson's talk to Socket in Spring 2015. Smart places, challenging the all too often corporate smart city rhetoric, apologies David, <laughs> yeah. in, in a series of six guides. Joss Creese will be inviting your input tomorrow during the Smart Places session. Location intelligence, a series of videos. So for example, the second video will look at real examples of using location intelligence in social care, fraud, education, planning and regeneration, local democracy and transport. The videos and supporting material are being produced by Andy Coote's team, who some of you will know are world leading exponents in harnessing location data in places. Go to our stand, we'd love to have your feedback on this and all the other projects that I mentioned. And I must also mention Socketum Advisory, uh, led by David Bryant, high value consultancy and digital transformation, shared services and complex IT program management, all to arrive at simplified, standardized and shared uh, services at lower cost while delivering improved services across places. So Andy Jost, Vicky, David and I will all be here today and tomorrow. And as I say, keen to have your feedback and please see us uh, at the Sockenham stand. So lastly then, the role of the head of IT, the CIO, the CDO. A couple of years ago, Gartner set out this spectrum that you see on the slide. Broker and engineer, integrator and optimizer, enabler and conductor, explorer, and pioneer. And if you follow the arrow, you're moving from an internal to an external focus and from an operational to a transformational orientation. And my guess is that every one of us in the audience can identify bits of our role with each of those personas. And it takes me back to the early 2000s. Joss Creese, speaking at our annual conference in Brighton, set out a number of personas for the head of IT. The anorak, the anorak, the flak jacket, the exhibitionist, the salesman, the faceless suit, or Captain Scarlet, action hero with mysterious superhuman powers of indestructibility. And he concluded by saying that the problem is we need increasingly to be all of these and more. Well, I would argue even from there we've moved on. 
As Graham MacDonald, director of Solace, put it in a recent blog, we need to grow a style of leadership across the whole sector that creates a renewed sense of purpose, which creates hope for all, and where leaders are seen genuinely to empower staff at all levels, to innovate without fear of failure, effectively communicating, collaborating across organisational structures, and being held accountable for delivering outcomes. And we're proposing that one of our main insight research projects in the new year will highlight, highlight real practical examples of transformational and collaborative leadership and its achievements. And if you want some clues, look at our most recent topical briefing on the transformation program uh, at Aylesbury Vale District Council. And we're actively supporting this approach through our leadership academy led by Steve Cliff. A recent London workshop had a great mix of participants and there's another one coming up shortly in the northeast. So to conclude, Socketham has been turning its attention to the big unresolved areas, the complex public services, the transformations that lie in wait, the data that sits unused in local places. We've been emphasising the importance of place, the diversity of places, but underpinning that diversity, the opportunity to simplify, standardise and share. Wong Chu Sherpa tackled the too difficult box. And earlier this year at a Comets conference in Sweden, I heard about a transformation in pathology, reducing 28 days for cancer diagnosis down to five. But not satisfied with five, they're actively exploring how to bring that elapsed time down to minutes. And I wonder what is our ambition for reforming complex relational services? Is it a whole system focus on transforming outcomes that matter to people, such as social isolation, giving a child a caring home, enabling older people to live independent lives, making hospital and care home discharges actually work? I could go on. Will we be active participants as part of place-based leadership teams, building capability, platforms, data sharing, and its exploitation? And finally, will we pursue a relentless focus on simplify, standardize, and share in collaboratively redesigning and re reforming complex services with our service users. Thank you.